Hey guys, Crystal Delahose here with Sorority Packets. Thanks for tuning in. I am the owner and founder of Sorority Packets. I'm a mom of two daughters, young daughters, but I love teenagers. I'm a senior photographer and um, have, this is my 10th year in business, so that makes me feel really old. But I have a long history of mentoring teenagers um, through an organization called Young Life. I would hear moms say, you know, I was in a sorority, but it's changed so much. Or, you know, I'm from the Northeast, or I'm from the West Coast, and I, um, it's different here. Or, you know, um, it can be a little competitive in the South. So I hear that quite a bit. It's not competitive because the sororities are wanting to cut people. There's a lot of misconceptions out there. It's competitive because uh, Greek life has really expanded. Lots of girls are interested. A lot more people are going to college. Um, and so a lot of the sororities uh, on campus, depending on what university you go to, they have specific quotas and they can't go over those quotas. And so if you have too many girls going through recruitment and not enough spots, it just, it, that is just part of the process that they won't be able to give bids to everyone. So after I was talking to my clients who become friends, moms and daughters, I started trying to help and it kind of spiraled into a passion and a love for um, doing kind of the grunt work for you guys. And so I have the most amazing team, Carly Kiker. Um, she's out there. Her history, her background is that she was a recruitment chair at Pepperdine. Um, so it's just this magical partnership um, that we've kind of developed. And between the both of us, and then we have Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Um, Jessica is our amazing designer. Um, we have spent countless hours and hours and hours, that you guys, hundreds of hours researching and trying to do the grunt work for you guys. Um, what we found is that there are a lot of recycled Pinterest articles. No offense, Pinterest. We love Pinterest and we're on Pinterest, by the way, if you want to find us at Sorority Packets on Pinterest. Um, we love Pinterest, so I'm not knocking Pinterest. But what happens is, is that um, what becomes popular is what's pinned the most. And sometimes, um, have you guys been looking and then you click on the link and it's a really old article or it's an old link. And so we were finding a lot of that. We really are committed to continually support local Penn Hellenics. Uh, we research universities all over the country and we really try and give you the most accurate and up-to-date information. With that said, it doesn't mean that we are the end-all be-all of information. Um, because you still need to go through your specific university and there is no way that we um, <laughs> could possibly know every single university that has Greek life um, and what that local chapter requires for recruitment. So anyway, with all of that said, I just want to give you a little spiel on who we are um, and who I am and kind of where this came from. But we've been getting a lot of questions and emails and phone calls and I just thought, let me just get online, do a quick video, and do a quick checklist of what you should be doing to prepare for recruitment. First thing, obviously, you guys have registered for recruitment through your university and if you haven't, that deadline might have passed so you better get on that right away. First thing you should do is be registered. And this is different than your local Penalenic, which is an amazing resource. Um, if you did that back in the spring, you still have to go through your university and make sure that you've registered for recruitment. So if you haven't done that, do that right now. Seriously, stop listening to me and do that right now if you're planning to go through recruitment. Okay, the first thing that you might want to do is clean up your social media accounts. So this is new. I'm old, you guys. Um, when I went through recruitment, I'm still trying to get my mom to dig up my recruitment photo. I'm pretty sure we walked over to the neighbor's crepe myrtle. Um, because it was blooming and I guess it matched the pink shirt or blouse I was wearing and my mom uh, snapped a picture of me in front of the crepe myrtle. So maybe that's why I'm a senior photographer. I'm not sure. It's changed quite a bit, but social media wasn't around whenever I went through recruitment, but now it's really important. So a couple things about that. If you are private and you're not even on social media, um, do not go and open up social media accounts for that. Um, more than anything, my advice is to be um, the most authentic version of yourself. That's how I try and live my life. Um, and, and ultimately, that's what you should be doing too. So if you don't have social media accounts, don't go you know, log into Instagram and say, oh, I've got to set up an account. Don't do that. But if you do, which I'm assuming that the majority of you do, clean those up. Um, you know, just... Think about the captions and the pictures that you're posting. Think about a future employer. Um, anything that might be misconstrued, 
the red solo cup and uh, the red eyes and, um, you know, the scandalous uh, outfit, you know, I'm not one to get into modesty really, but you might, you might want to delete that one. You might want to delete it. After you register, after you clean up your social media accounts, um, is to go ahead right now and start practicing the art of active listening. So you're like, what is she talking about? I do have a psychology degree. So a lot of people say, did you study photography in college? Um, and my answer is no, but I believe my psychology degree actually helps me more. So I'm going to use some of that knowledge to help you. Um, here's the thing. We have read so many articles out there, and we are not knocking other people's advice um, we, about what to talk about during sorority recruitment, um, but we just feel like there were major holes um, in the advice. Um, some of the advice you'll hear is, you know, what not to talk about. You know, I feel like if you go into any situation thinking, what am I not supposed to talk about? It kind of sets things off negative in, in a negative way where you're so scared to bring up your boyfriend or you're really scared to bring up your faith because someone's told you you can't bring up religion. Don't go in with the mindset of I absolutely cannot talk about these things. You know, just use your judgment. If you're speaking to a stranger for the first time. I doubt very seriously that when you meet somebody, the first thing you're going to do is, you know, tell them like all of your political views um, or controversial stance on, you know, whatever it is. Um, at some point in time, when you become sorority sisters, the goal is to build a strong friendship and that you will mutually accept each other's views, even if they're differing. But um, obviously, that might not be something you would do. So when I say practice the art of listening, what I mean is right now, um, start being a good listener to your mom, to your best friend, to your little sister, you know, whoever you have around you, your boyfriend. Um, maybe you should tell him to start being a good listener. I don't know. Anyway, I think that, that kind of the misconception is that when I go into sorority um, recruitment, I am trying out. You know, it really isn't a pageant. Again, not knocking pageants. And it isn't an, fully an interview either. It is like an interview, but it's not a complete interview. Um, you are trying to put your best self forward. Um, but ultimately, I would say treat it like you are trying to become friends um, and what you would naturally do if you meet someone that you're genuinely interested in and that you want to become friends with. After all, that is the whole purpose, right? It's really easy to get on a tangent talking about yourself. And while it is an interview, when I say interview, that means they ask all the questions and you just respond um, with answers. Even though it feels like an interview and the, the member, the current members, are someone interviewing you and trying to get to know you and they've kind of been trained or told to ask you questions and they're trying to learn about you, you guys, the best way um, for someone to remember you is to make a connection. I think we go in thinking, I'm in competition with all of these other girls and I have to prove that I'm the best potential new member. That isn't really what the whole process is about. It, it really is about um, you interviewing and finding where you fit and then the different sorority houses determining if you're a fit and it's this mutual selection that really is a unique process that works. I'm spending a lot of time on this because I think it's really important. Um, what I might do is you know, make a list of questions that you might ask somebody um, and I know this is going against the grain but it's not all about you. Here's the truth. If you sit down with a current member and maybe she's nervous and maybe she's a little shy, but you ask questions about her, you know, like what is she involved with on campus? Or what is her favorite thing about this sorority? Um, you guys might find some common ground and make a connection. Um, and even if she didn't ask you a ton of questions like she was supposed to do, when you leave, um, it's because she's gonna have a good feeling. Like, hey, I connected with her and she's gonna remember you. And that's really what you want because um, then she'll talk about you to her friends who are the ones that are um, selecting who they want to become a member of the sorority. So practice the art of li active listening now. The next thing on the checklist would be to pre-plan your outfit. So, um, you know, this just saves stress. I'm talking accessories, shoes. Um, speaking of shoes, um, you can wear cute wedges or heels, but man, pack those flip-flops and stick those in your bag because your feet are going to really hurt. Um, again, all of this plus so much more um, is in the book. It's called Everything You Need to Know About Sorority Recruitment. Seriously, guys, everything is in this book. <laughs> what started as a small project 
for Carly and I turned into a 50 page ebook. So I highly recommend it if you're feeling a little apprehensive um, and you really are wanting to know exactly what to expect through the process. So anyway, plan your outfits ahead of time. Um, that even includes kind of hair and makeup. I mean, this isn't your wedding day. I'm not trying to go overboard here, but um, if you're like me um, and have naturally curly hair, you might want to consider what the climate's going to be at the university where you're rushing um, and take that into account. You know, if you have super curly hair, go for it and wear your hair curly that day. Um, don't, don't wear it straight. So um, that's just a suggestion. The next thing on the checklist would be to make a list of the reasons why you want to join um, a sorority. Newsflash, spoiler alert. Um, I am forecasting 100% chance that you will be asked this question during sorority recruitment. I think most people would say, hey, I'm doing it because, you know, I want to meet friends. And, and that's a great answer, of course. That's, you're wanting to bond and meet new people. But, um, you know, you really should think through why you're wanting to enter into the Greek system and what it is that you are wanting to contribute, you know, because I think a lot of times now um, when we join clubs or we, you know, go to church or do different things, we kind of have this attitude of like, what are you going to give me? What are you going to do for me? And, you know, life is so much better when you approach things um, with a heart to help, to contribute. When I changed my mindset, um, it really, it, it made life a lot sweeter, number one. Um, and I could go on and on about the benefits of that, but you're going to be asked that question. And so really think about it. Why are you going through the Greek system? And, um, you know, think about things like, you know, here's what I feel like I can contribute. If I may get a little cheesy here, you know, I'm big on this, um, just in life in general. As I really believe that we all were created um, with purpose, um, uniquely. And um, you have something really awesome and special and unique to contribute to whatever it is you decide to do, including the sorority. But the last thing on your checklist should be just to prepare for every scenario. Your university's Penhellenic is likely to say something that might frighten you a little bit. It might go something like this. Uh, we cannot guarantee that every single woman who goes through recruitment will receive a bid at the end of the week. Ah, what? I'm gonna go through all of this and I might not receive a bid. Um, I don't say this or bring it up to scare you. Um, first of all, a lot of people don't talk about it, um, but it's just the truth. You just need to do your best to prepare the same way you would prepare um, if you, you know, were on a really important job interview or anything else in your life that you've done that really meant something that you were really excited about. It's not, I'm not talking really about competition and trying to beat out the next person. What I'm talking about is just trusting the system. Um, you know, I realize that I'm the 35 year old over here um, talking about sorority recruitment. It's been several years since I've gone through it um, and things have changed. Um, however, uh, I have lots of relationships with teenagers going through recruitment as well as girls that are in college that I've photographed. And I think I mentioned earlier that I've been photographing teenagers, seniors specifically for 10 years um, on top of my involvement with lots of other, I coach basketball and different things. Um, my point is, is that I know a lot of young ladies that are in college right now. The one thing that we hear over and over and over and over again is trust the system. And they all say it over and over again. And so I'm just going to say this, do not go into recruitment. If you have decided to go through sorority recruitment, make sure it's because not because I'm going through recruitment because I want to become a member of this specific, um, sorority. Go in with an open mind and saying, I want to become a member of the Greek system on my campus. Here's what I feel like I can contribute. Here's what I hope to gain from being a part um, of a sorority. So we're not saying that everything has to be a fit, just the same way you're not friends with every single person you ever encounter. Um, however, don't go in with preconceived notions about where you're going to be a fit or what's the best sorority. We hear that all the time. It's ridiculous. Um, this, each sorority has hundreds of girls in it and they're not all the same. You know, it's like all the blondes are in this sorority, all the brunettes are here, all the smart ones are here. I mean, that's all just rumors, you guys. And so, um, you know, it works a lot more beautifully when we're not all the same, right? My point is, is that don't go in with, you know, if I don't get into these three sororities that I'm not going to accept a bid, you know, really just make a decision now that even if you're disappointed and you will be disappointed, um, I'm just going to prepare you for that. And if for whatever reason that you're not, just hallelujah, count yourself as super lucky. You might not visit every house that you want to visit every single day after each round. And that's okay. You want to be... <laughs> Uh, a member of a sorority who is psyched about having you. You have something amazing to contribute. So um, let that go right now 
and uh, don't put all your eggs in one or two baskets. You know, really give yourself the best opportunity for the mutual selection process to work. Um, because listen, I don't want you to go through this whole process and then not receive a bid because you decided to only put, you know, two of the houses that you visited the last day. If you're close with your mom, especially, let her be the one during recruitment that you're texting and calling every night. It'll be really, really um, difficult to keep your mouth shut because you'll be so excited and wanting to process all the information. But I'm telling you, um, it is so much better to process it with either a friend at another university going through the same process or your mom or an aunt or someone that is not your roommate or going through the process with you. Um, I promise you don't want to be swayed with what your decision is. Trust yourself. Um, trust yourself, listen to your inner voice, all of that good stuff. And, um, and I'm really excited for you guys going through sorority recruitment. Let us know how we can help. And I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your summer. Bye.